Lord. Amen. How's everybody doing this morning? Yeah, everybody's doing all right. Amen. You know what? I think we slept through the summer and just landed on the and fall because it's just been so cold lately. I mean, yesterday was cold. Today is a little chilly. I feel like we're entering fall and we just kind of missed it. Um, I, it's it's pretty amazing. I uh, I something that I did not expect. And I don't like actually. <laughs> it's it's pretty uh, scary for me. Uh, but anyway, before I begin our message, I want to tell everybody about some some things that are happening here at our community. And the first one is that Sunday school has begun. Amen. Last week it was fantastic opening. Uh, the teachers were excited. And you know what's even better? The students are excited. I know Adina yesterday, she said, I can't wait to be to have it uh, for it to be Sunday. Uh, so that was exciting. That was exciting for me to hear that. Uh, so services, Sunday school services are being offered at our 11 o'clock service. Amen. And our membership classes are continuing on. This is our third week coming into it. Wednesday for Alpha and Beta classes. If you have not been uh, yet an Alpha class, uh, make sure you join it. And if you're a graduate of Alpha and was not able to get into Beta, uh, we're still starting. <coughs> Next week next sunday um you guys know about the tornadoes that hit oklahoma last week on the 20th i believe um the time we were uh pretty much it was saturday just a week ago uh f5 tornadoes just ran through i i don't know if you guys seen the videos of these massive tornadoes just came through and leveled homes and if you've seen like the difference between what it was before and what it was after, within minutes, a whole entire community communities were gone. There were 24 uh, people uh, that perished with those tornadoes, and um, I believe 10 were children, if I if I was not um, mistaken. But uh, hundreds more displaced by all these tornadoes. And so, what we've decided, we've really decided, because uh, we are the center of hope here in South Beach. And I believe that God has done so many great things through us and for us. Uh, when um, Sandy hit, and right after Sandy, we were able to help and give relief effort. We decided we need to recycle uh, or cycle the generosity. And so we are heading, myself, Danny, and our tour are heading to Oklahoma this coming next Sunday, actually, after services. Yeah, amen, amen, after services. And we need your help. We want to fill the church van with baby items, all right, light, lightly used um, clothes for babies and young children, layettes, um, food items, cereals, uh, formula, uh, shoes, things of that nature, anything, diapers, anything that we would need, zinc oxide, you know, for, for the bottoms uh, of the babies, um, medication, Tylenol, Motrin, all this stuff. We want to pack it in. There's a church that we're heading to. It's in Norman, uh, Oklahoma. It's about 10 miles away from Moore, Oklahoma, from where the tornadoes hit. And we're going to connect with New Life Bible Church over there. They're actually connected with Renaissance Church that helped us. They gave substantially to Renaissance Church Sandy Relief Effort. And so we have a true connection with them. And so we're going to come in. Sometimes I was thinking, you know, throughout the week, I'm kind of like dreading because Danny put on Facebook, it's a 23-hour ride, you know, and I'm just like, oh God, I didn't realize how long that ride is. <clears throat> and, and I was thinking, why can't we just send these items or why can't we just, there's convoys of hope going around staten island why don't we just send these items give you know my my goal is to have a thousand dollars worth of items over to oklahoma now why don't we just do that you know why do we have to go and i realized that a lot of the people that came from different parts of the country from texas remember that texas the roadhouse church uh from kentucky people that came from indiana 36 hours the, the the texas church drove here and then they just stayed and dropped 
dropped the items and turned right back around and went back right back to Texas. They didn't even hung out. They didn't even see the devastation. They just went, dropped off the items and came right back. And I realized, you know what? It's not just the items. It's the presence. It's the feeling that people care about you. And especially from a devastated place like Staten Island and knows, the, knows what rebuilding and knows the things that God can do, even with devastation, with natural devastation, God can turn things around. And I think with our praying for Staten Island shirts over there, we'll just connect with them. And we would say, look, we were there. We've been there. Uh, and and we still we're still recovering our community is still recovering but god is going to do great things and god's going to turn around rebuild renew and restore everything that you lost and it's awesome yesterday i was at marley and um Lou's house they had a party for their young young son <clears throat> and i came in there the last time i was in their basement it was just bare wood because they had just tore off all the sheetrock i came in there the place was fantastic. They had a, they had like a man cave. You know, this is all like in the basement. They had a, 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 a like a serving bar over there, and and everything is just wide open. And I turned to him because I met them previously with the passing away of Lou's father. I met them, and they were saying how that they needed to renovate the basement and everything like that. And I said, look, man, you wanted to renovate the basement. You didn't have the money, and you didn't have the gusto, and somehow God just turned things around, and the things you desire came from the things that you really didn't want. Uh, and God's just got some great things happening. And so we know, we've seen it from our eyes that God can restore, rebuild, and renew. Amen. So I believe it's our presence. I think coming over there will just give a good boost to those that are suffering uh, in, in uh, more Oklahoma. Right, guys? So we need your help. We need everybody's help. <clears throat> if you can't do it yourself or you don't have the finances or you don't have the wherewithal to to, to, to help us fill out the, 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 the van, go ahead and, 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 and rally your coworkers, rally your family, rally your friends, and bring it here to our to Hope Center, and we will go and load it up by uh, that day, or by hopefully by Saturday. We'll have emptied it out and put some things in there already. Our plan is hopefully to reach about $1,000 worth of items in that van and bring it to them. If it's financial, most likely what we'll do is we will pay for it as we get there to save on gas. So when we're, you know, I don't know what states we're going to pass, but somewhere down the line, we'll buy the items there as we go and, and, and fill out the, the gas, uh, the, the, the van. So we're excited about it. I'm excited about it. And I think it's a great thing to do. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Uh, I have other announcements, but we'll do that later. Anyway, I'm continuing our message on faith. Amen. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's been it's been fantastic for me. I just was talking to my friend yesterday about the grace of God <clears throat> and how that the grace of God uh, is really freely given to us all and that there's nothing for us to do really to save ourselves. There's nothing for us to do, period, rather, to save ourselves. God has done it already. All we have to do is connect with him by faith. Amen. And we we have salvation. We don't have to work for it. We don't have to to strive for it. There, you know, and, and everything was paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ, the Ark Calvary, or the sacrifice of Calvary. So what is there for us to do? It, the, the, the ultimate thing now as a believer in Jesus is not to look for every day how to get saved and how to go to heaven, but rather how can I exercise my faith in God? So everything is not about sin. Everything is not about what you don't do or what you do do. It's about my expression of faith. Because growing up, I thought, well, I have to do this thing so that God will be pleased with me so that I can go and make it to heaven. And for those, most of us, that, that is the mindset I have to do in order for me to get in. I have to, um, even world religions, you have to go to a mountaintop in order for you to reach some Zen. You need to, you need to travel some faraway distance in order for you to reach some Nirvana. You need to do some things in order for you to do certain things. The, uh, the Muslim faith has the five, five pillars. You have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do this in order for you to acquire that. But in Christianity, Jesus has done it all. So the question is, why live according to the scripture? Why live according to the way he wants us to live? Well, this is the key thing. Because it pleases God for us to exercise faith. See, faith is invisible. Faith is intangible. Faith is inaudible. Faith is ingustable. You like that word? 
ingustible. <laughs> right? You can't taste it. Right? Faith is inodorous. I like that word too. Inodorous. You can't smell it. But. Not to say a big but. That was fun. But. Faith sees the unseen. Faith feels the upcoming. Faith hears the outcome. Faith tastes the goodness. Faith smells the results. Now, let me repeat that because we don't have it up on the screen here. Faith sees the unseen. Faith feels the upcoming. Feel it. You feel it. There's something coming. There's something. You don't know what it is, but it's something. It, you feel the upcoming. Faith hears the outcome before somebody ever tells you you already know the outcome. Before, before the doctor tells you anything, you already know the outcome. Before the lawyer tells you anything, you already know the outcome. You're sitting down at the signing table and you already know the outcome. Faith hears the outcome. Faith tastes the goodness. The Bible says taste and see that the Lord is good. How can you taste the goodness of God? Well, faith make you taste the goodness of God. And faith smells the results. Just smell. Mm. I smell the good thing. You know, like you're cooking. You know, when your, your, your mother or yourself is cooking, you haven't tasted it yet, but you smell the result. You know it's going to be good. Faith does that. Let's look at the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. And if Taylor, you can help me out with this. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. And we're going to go through the whole entire chapter. So, uh, and, and so it, there's a lot of things to, to say. So I'm going to make it very quickly. And, and um, uh, Mike, if you can just say you're doing it again. Will you always, uh, you're more, more there's, if there's anybody capable of telling me I'm sounding like an auctioneer, it's Mike. So uh, <laughs> he's got my, so here it is. Okay, so 11. Uh, by faith, everybody say by faith. So Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. There's a lot of biblical stories here. And so if you don't know the stories, I would suggest you, you check it out because it's pretty cool. This is a Genesis story. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it, he being dead, still speaks. So the story is that Abel was killed by his brother Cain. That's the story. Abel was killed by his brother Cain. And the Bible says that faith, right? <clears throat> uh, by faith, Abel offered up to God a more excellent sacrifice. And listen, because of his faith, the last, the last part of this verse says, and through it, he being dead yet speaks. This is what happened. Cain kills Abel and Abel's blood cried out to God. So that God says to Cain, I hear the blood of your brother. Faith allows you to speak even when you're dead. When people of faith die, their death is not just an ordinary death. Their life continues to speak. And that's the reason why we're talking about people that have been dead, what? Thousands and thousands of years ago. Because of their faith. You want your life to speak when you're past? Live a life of faith. Verse 5. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had his testimony that he pleased God. Here we are. We have Enoch, another Gen Genesis story. And this is Enoch walked by faith and he was translated. He was moved from earth into heaven without seeing death. Here's a man of faith that he so pleased God by his faith that while he was walking around, a stairway, so to speak, built right in front of him. And he just continued walking up to heaven without even dying. That's amazing. See, Hebrews 11.6, the Bible tells us, but without faith, it is, everybody say, impossible. impossible. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently Seek him. Listen, 
We are not living according to the word of God so that we can be saved. Because salvation is free. Salvation is not of works lest you and I would boast. If salvation was for work, if heaven was based on our work, we would say, pretty good work. This is where religiosity comes through. This is when religious people walk around feeling like they're better than other people. Because they think that what they do will inherit them eternal life. And God is saying, no, it's not what you do. But we do want to please God. We want to say, like, God, I want to please you. I want to be pleasing with you. And how do you do that? Not by doing good works to enter heaven, but following the word of God by faith. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. And living by faith makes God reward you for seeking him. Verse 7. By faith, Noah being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became the heir of the righteousness, which is according to faith. By faith, Noah, being warned of God concerning things not seen as yet. Faith is about the things unseen. And here he is being warned of God for the things not seen. Even though he had not seen it, the warning, what? Made him prepare and moved. He moved with godly fear. The warning of God, the voice of God speaking to Noah made him move. Faith makes you move. Don't ever tell, don't let anybody tell you that faith is just one of these, you know, I believe in God, I'm going to sit on my hands. No, if you truly believe in God, faith will make you move. If you believe that God is going to bless you in your job, faith is going to make you move. If, God, if you believe that God is going to bless you through your education, you're going to move. And what? And prepare. People of faith know how to what? Prepare. I know for myself, you know, and I always go back to this. We prayed for about eight leaders three years ago. And there were hardly anybody here. And there was hardly anything going on. And we just prepared. Why? Because we believe that God is doing what? Something great. And it might not happen this year. It may not happen next year. But we believe that it's going to happen. Because God has told us. Amen. So when you believe that God has given you something or believe that something is on its way, you what? Everybody say prepare. And this is it. He prepared an ark to the saving of his house through which he condemned the world and became the heir of righteousness according to faith. And you're like, what? He, he prepared and condemned the world? Noah condemned the world? Noah did not in the sense condemn the world like you're all going to hell. He did not do that. But what he was saying is, look, I believe it. If you don't believe it, do you. That I'm going to move. I'm going to prepare. I'm going to do the things I need to do. If you don't want to do it, that's you. And by doing so, it's, 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 it's saying to them, well, do what you have to do. Do what you feel like you have to do. But as for me, I believe that God has said this. And I'm going to go and prepare an ark. And I'm going to go and move. And I'm going to go and tell my family. I'm going to try to share it to the world. I'm going to try to tell them, this is what's happening. If you don't want to do it, I will do it. Remember a story in the book of Kings where there was a, a drought and there was a famine in the land. <clears throat> and the prophet of Israel came up, uh, Elisha came up and said, there's going to be food the next day. And the right hand man of the king said, no way. The only way it's going to happen, if God opened the windows of heaven and, and, and pours out food, there's no way. And the prophet of God said, well, you're going to hear of it, but you're, going to, you're not going to eat of it. And the next day, four leprous men, and you can see this in the book of Kings, four leprous men comes into the enemy camp. The enemy was so scared because God magnified 
the walking and the marching of these four leprous men and made it sound like there was a big army and the Syrians ran out and tried to kill themselves and got out of their way and when they got to the Syrian camp there was food everywhere there was clothes everywhere and the four men looked at it themselves and said look we've got to tell the nation over there because they're starving we can't eat this ourselves we got to tell them and when they went to the city the the right hand man of the king had to be the one that opened the gate but there was hungry hundreds and thousands of hungry people in the city so when they opened the gate guess who got trampled the man that said God is not able to do it he condemned himself because somebody said I believe it do you I'm not going to try to go and try to drag you with me I'm not going to try to say come on See, that's, a, that's, that's, that's an appeal for us believers. We could share our faith. We could share, look, this is the promise of God. This is great. But if I, people say, no, I don't want to hear it, we're not dragging anybody. We're not dragging anybody to the grace of God. We're not dragging anybody to, the, to heaven. We're not dragging anybody. I give it to you. This is it. You do you. That's what Noah was saying. I'm going to build this ark. I'm going to talk to my family. I'm going to do this because God said it. I believe it. And that settles it Maria, say amen and what happened because of that he became the heir of righteousness through faith he became he placed a legacy in his life by being a man of faith the, verse 8 by faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive for inheritance and he went out not knowing whither he went by faith now, Abraham went out. I'm telling you, you cannot move by faith and not do something. When God tells you, you move. If it is you have to get out, you get out because you're believing. And this is the key thing. He went out not knowing. Abraham did what he had to do not knowing what even the outcome was going to be. He did what he had to do without knowing the result. And faith makes you move without even seeing the result as of yet. Like I said, it's like mother. It's like my wife cooking and we smell the food. And you know what? You prepare already what? You prepare the table already because you know it's going to be good. You haven't tasted a single bite. You haven't, you haven't put the fork into the meat. You haven't tasted a single sip of that sauce, but you know it's going to be good. And so your mouth is salivating. You're doing what you have to do. You're leaving the game behind. You're, you're, you, know, you, you hang up the phone. You're like, I'm getting ready for this food that is not even here yet. I don't even know if it tastes any good, but it sure smells like it's good. Faith smells even though it does not smell. Huh? You, you'll get that some other time. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 9 to 10. The Bible says, by faith, this is also Abraham, he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For what? Verse 10, for he waited or he looked for the city which has foundation, whose builder and maker is God. Listen, faith made Abraham move around in tents. See, faith will make you downsize because you believe God will make you go up. You believe that downsizing is not the ultimate place. Because Abraham was in the land of Ur of Chaldees and he was part of a wealthy family. But when he heard the voice of God, he didn't see it. He just heard the voice of God. He went out not knowing where he was going to go and dwelt in tents. He downsized from living in a comfortable life into uncomfortableness because he was searching for a city that God built himself. When you're living by faith, you're able to downsize because you know promotion comes not from the east nor from the west. Promotion comes from God. And a lot of us get shaken up when we get downsized. No, 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 no. I get excited when downsizing happens because I may have to live in tents for a while and journey in a land that is not mine. But I'm searching for a city which is given by. I'm searching for that opportunity that God himself gave me. 
Amen. Let's continue on. Verse 11. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength or power to conceive seed when she was past age, since she counted him faithful who had promised. Here's Sarah. She's about 90 years old, and she hears God's promise, and she conceives. Now listen, you're 90 years old. You're not having fun anymore with your husband. <laughs> Viagra wasn't created back then. That's done. But because God said it's going to happen, well, <laughs> we're going to have a good time today. I'm telling you, we're going to talk about some good stuff. <laughs> she was old. Everybody say, but. but. She had faith. And she had the strength. <laughs> huh? She received strength to conceive. See, now you're 90 years old. You're not pushing a baby through. Right? They didn't have anesthesia back then. They didn't have C-sections back then. You had to push it through. And God gave her through faith. God will give you strength when you believe. You know that? When you think you've done enough, when you think you're finished, God gives you the strength for one more gust up. When you're a believer, when you have faith, even though you're past your age, you're past your prime, you know, you can look at you and you say, oh, I'm 50 years old, I'm 50, I'm 65, I'm 70, this is it, this is all my life is going to be. And the prophet Joel said, and the young man shall see visions and the old man shall see, shall dream dreams. You know what the scripture says that? Because most of the time young people only think about today and old people only think about yesterday. And God is saying, when my spirit comes, young people are going to think about tomorrow. And the old people, the elder people, are going to start dreaming new things again. And they're going to stop talking about their past and the things that they did and their heyday. There's not going to be any midlife crisis to a person of faith. Because I'm constantly looking forward for that city whose maker and builder is God. You're ready. You can still bear a child. It's like, whoa. Maybe not the physical child. But maybe there's another fruit that you think you can't have. There's another revival. There's another place for you to come up to. There's another business for you to build. There's another career for you to make. That's the power of faith. And the Bible continues on, verse 12. Therefore, from one man, from one sprang up, him as good as dead, so many as the stars of heaven in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore, innumerable. This one, Abraham and Sarah, they were already should have been called dead. They're 90, 99 years old. They should, they're dead. You know, just go in the nursing home and, 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 and that's it. You're finished. You're done. You're, 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 the, the heyday is done. And the Bible says no. In their last days, that's when they got their greatest fruit. Woo! In your last days, that's when you got your greatest fruit. Let me tell you about Kentucky Fried Chicken, Colonel Sanders. He was 61 years old when he started Kentucky Fried Chicken. Ray Kroc. The, 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 the originator of the McDonald's franchise, right? Not, not, not the brothers, the McDonald's brothers, but the one that bought the McDonald's brothers' rights to franchise McDonald's, Ray Kroc. He was 50 plus years old when he started that business. And the rest is what? History. Don't count yourself out. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't count me out. I mean, it's talking about the old folk. Imagine you young people. Thank you, Taylor. God bless you. <laughs> it's got to be the Mohawk. Yeah. Right? It's a great thing to be able to say, I'm not done yet. Don't count me out. Yeah? Therefore, from one man, 
Wait, go back to verse 12. I want to just read it again. Therefore, from one man, wherefore also there sprang up of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars. Everybody say, so many. You got so much more to give. Don't count yourself out. Mm. Verse 13. These all died in faith, not having received the promise. But having seen them and greeted them from afar and having confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on earth. Now this is, this is a fabulous thing. Because the Bible says these all died in faith not having received the promise. But, everybody say but. but. Having seen them afar off. Where, here's the in New King James Version. Were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed. Here is... The scripture, the Bible says they all died in faith. They did not receive the promise. Abraham only saw Isaac. Jacob only saw the 12 tribes. David saw only his son Solomon get up. He did not see Jesus Christ come. But because of faith, no, even if they died, they still confess. They still embrace. They still greeted. They still still said the promise is for me i heard of a, a man who prayed for a relative or a friend of his over and over again to come to the lord the man did never come to jesus until after that man died then that friend of his or that relative of his that he was praying for came to know the lord sometimes we don't we won't see it in our day but we believe we will see it someday. Somebody say amen. I believe in the promise of God. If we stay a hundred for all my life and I die, I believe that this church is going to reach that level that God has called us to reach. I believe it. Verse 14 and 15. For those who say such things, for they that say such things make it manifest that they are seeking after a country of their own. And truly, and if indeed they had been mindful of that country from which they went out, they would have had opportunity to return. This is something about faith that I want to uh, <clears throat> tell everybody. The Bible says that these men of faith look for a city of their own. Meaning, they look for the promise of God, personal promise of God. That God told them something and they went for it. And in fact, they went for it. Verse 15 says that if they were thinking about the country that they were from, they would have returned there. Meaning, these men stop forgetting about where they're from and just continuing to think about where they're heading. This is important for us believers. This is important for us followers of Jesus. Why? Because oftentimes we talk about where we've come from. And oftentimes we talk about, oh, all those things in the back. Persons of faith do not look at the things behind them. They don't think about returning. They burn bridges. Why? Because they believe there's a great city, there's a great purpose, there's a great plan that God has for them in their life. So they're ready. They're not thinking about the old country. Because if they were, they would have returned back. We've got to stop, uh, believers, we've got to stop thinking about the life that we lived before we knew Jesus. And start thinking about where God is bringing us. Because that's where the glory, that's where your personal purpose will come to play when you begin to think about those things behind you. Some of us have find it difficult to walk by faith because we continually think about the country that we're from. And I'm not talking about the Philippines or China or Puerto Rico or what have you. I'm thinking about that old place that we were from. We're moving forward. Right? Verse 16, but now <clears throat> they desire a better that is a heavenly country. But now they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Wherefore God is not ashamed of them to be called their God. For he had prepared for them a city. When we walk by faith. Uh, you know what? This is, this is incredible, incredible scripture. Wherefore God is not ashamed of them. Is there a way for God to be ashamed of us? There obviously is. And how is that? By not walking by faith. When we don't walk by faith, God is ashamed of us. But when we walk by faith, God is saying, I got a city prepared for them. I got this thing ready, set up. I'm not ashamed to call you my son. 
I'm not ashamed to put you up and give you favor over all your co-workers. I'm not ashamed to highlight you over everybody else because you are walking by faith. Somebody say amen. A few months back, let me tell you a story, and I'm, I'm running late behind already. Let me tell you a quick, quick story, and I'm going to... I'm going to try to auction it off, uh, Mike. <coughs> I'm going to do a quick, quick story. And that is a few months ago, uh, somebody from work <coughs> was really mad at me and put their hand on my neck. A supervisor. And I was just like, I was ready to call 911 and everything, you know, just like. They, they, it wasn't, they didn't squeeze my neck, they just was like, ah, and then took it back. They realized, uh-oh. So I went up to the offices and we had a little conversation, a little talk. So, and and I, they were trying to write me up for stuff I did. I'd done right, but they were writing me up. So anyway, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just plugging along. I'm just believing in God. We, we had a picnic the other day. And, and the incident management person now, right? This is a few months later. Incident management person goes, hey, Lamb. <clears throat> Man, you know, they were talking about you at the leadership report. Now, the leadership is all the head of the, the company. The, 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 the directors, the CEO, all of them are in this report. I said, yeah, is it good? He said, yeah, man, they were talking. They were highlighting you. They were talking so good about you. They said it four times. And here, because you're, a, 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 if, if we're people of faith, God is not ashamed. To turn whatever it is that people against us right to their face. And say, you want my son to be defeated? You want him to be fired? Guess what? I'm going to talk him up. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are going to be a people that are going to be spoken of when we walk by faith. People that walk with faith are courageous people. And those are the people that people talk about. People don't talk about non-courageous people. People talk about people with what? courage and guts and the bible says here uh um, where are we verse 16 but now they desire a better country back up <clears throat> heavenly wherefore god is not ashamed of them to be called their god he had prepared for them a city they prepared for him a place god has prepared for us a place <clears throat> listen my, my my work before all of, before i figure this out one of the high-end directors was talking about me and met and met the, 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 the comptroller, the CFO of the, the, the work that I, I, the business that I am um, working for. And he's like, and she's like, Lemuel, this is the guy. We're, and we're creating a department just for him. And this is, this is all, I'm just telling you this. And God is, is preparing for us. See, you and I have to walk by faith. And follow the voice of God, not because we want to get to heaven, but because we want to see that city. We want to see that place that God has prepared for us. If God has great blessings, great promises for us, I want to see it. And I want to live by faith so that I can go and stand in that city one day saying, Woo, God is a God of his word. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 17. I got so much more to go. By faith Abraham when he was tested offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Of whom it was said in Isaac your seed shall be called. Here by faith when you have faith you're willing to offer up your best. When you are walking by faith you're willing to offer up your most beloved. Knowing that God. Verse 18. Knowing that God can raise even the dead. Right? Verse 19, it says here, concluding that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence he did also in the figure receive him back. Abraham, by faith, was willing to offer up. This is, this is, this is the thing, folks. When you have faith, you're willing to give up the things you love the most because you know that God has the ability, has the power to return it back to you. Some of us don't live a life of sacrifice because we don't believe that God is able to bring back what we've lost. We're not willing to lose because we think that God is not able to bring back 
and more what we lose. But when you believe you're willing to offer up what? Your best. Your very own. In this, in this scripture, Abraham offered up his one and only son. Was willing to put his son's life in the offering of sacrifice. Because he believed that even if he had killed him, God was able to raise him back up. That's a man of faith. A man that says, if I offer this up, if I lose everything, if I offered up my car, I remember back in the day, <laughs> my friend and I driving around in our BMWs, right? I told you this story. We didn't want anybody there, but when the church got calling, we couldn't help it. We had to pick up people, right? Amen. And we think, oh, it's a loss. No, there's never a loss. You give your everything to God and God will return to you even what you've given up. Just believe in God. Verse 20 and 21, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worshiped, leaning on the staff, a uh, uh, top of his staff. Here, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things, what? To come. To come. Right. Not the things that they have here. Right. You know how we like uh, to, to will our children? We will our children what the things that we have. Men of faith, people of faith, do not talk about what they have. They talk about what is coming. They speak about what is coming. Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. So that when, when, when Isaac was blessing Jacob and Esau, they were blessing. When God blesses you, when all these things come to fruition, when the things that he promised to Abraham and to me comes to you, remember God. And, and, and Jacob, he was dying. Right? Verse 21. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of his sons. And Joseph worship leaning on top of his staff when you're dying even in your deathbed faith makes you what a blesser when you're about to die you're still blessing people mm. sometimes when you're dead you're dead you just want to like what well, just leave me alone when you're sick when you feel like you're all alone leave me alone no men of faith never say leave me alone let me bless you and even in their deathbed the bible says Joseph, leaning on his staff, continued to what? Worship. Even when he could not move around anymore, even when he couldn't dance anymore, he leaned on the staff and he said, I'm going to worship God. Even when my body says no, my heart and my faith says yes. Verse 22, by faith, Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instructions. Listen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every single one of us as believers need to learn the power of legacy. We need to learn the power of legacy. We need to learn that we're giving a next generation something else. People of faith give the next generation something else to look forward to. By faith, Joseph, when he was nigh, made mention, nigh to death, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel. Here, Joseph, you know, if you read the book of Exodus, <clears throat> if you read the book of Genesis, the Bible tells us that Joseph said, God will surely take you out of this land. And when he does, get my bones out of here. Wait a minute, Joseph. What are you saying? Yeah, that's right. I'm going to die before you get out of here. But when I die, don't you dare leave me here. Joseph made instructions. How many of us give instructions by faith? That's always something difficult for me, Danny. Because sometimes we don't see it. We remember the two, two, two years ago. Two years ago when we had our first friends and family service. And I told Danny, Danny, fill the whole entire house with chairs. And there was, remember that? There was a big reception table in the back. It was heavy. It's like 500 tons or something. There's four of us to move it. It wasn't 500 tons. It, it was a good amount of force. But four of us had to move it, had to carry it outside. And, 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 and I said, get all the chairs out here and fill it out. And I didn't know this, but Danny's filling it out thinking he's crazy. He's a lunatic. Why am I doing this? Nobody's going to show up. And I was giving instructions. Why? By faith. 
by faith. Give instructions. Somebody turn to your neighbors. I'm going to give instructions by faith. When I die, I want you to bring the $10 million that I'm leaving behind and split it up within the family, all right? You don't even have $10,000. Don't you worry. <laughs> don't you worry. $10 million is coming. And when I die, make sure it's divided properly. <laughs> Verse 23. By faith, Moses... When he was born, was hid three months by his parents because they saw he was a goodly child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Listen, when you're walking in faith, you don't have any fear. Over the commands of others. There's a story of a, of a, of, of a church who planted a seed to... To, to, to build a building and the commands of the county there prevented them from having to build but they pushed anyway they persevered anyway and they were not afraid remember that young lady by the last name of Scott in Columbine the shooter went to them went to her and said you're a believer in Jesus. I want you to, re want you to recant. I want you to, 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 to deny him. What was her name? Somebody look it up. She just said, no, I won't deny him. Not afraid. Because we believe by faith. Verse 24 to 25. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing of pleasures of sin. Here, Moses went by faith. He refused to be called the children of Pharaoh. Choosing rather. When you have faith, let me tell you something. You are able to refuse the enticement of the world. You're able to refuse the lure of the world because you'd rather choose to suffer and be with God than to entertain the worldly pleasures and the worldly appetites and be out of the plan of God. By faith, you're able to refuse. Somebody say, by faith, I'm able to refuse. Young people, you're able to refuse the lure of, of what the world is trying to offer us. Sex, money, fame. We're able to, re we'd rather suffer than to be out of the will of God. Because why? We know that people of faith find their city. Mm. 1126. Steaming the reproach of Christ. Greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. For he looked unto the recompense of his reward. He could not care whatever Egypt had to offer him. M Moses was a what? A prince of Egypt. You know that movie. Yeah. He grew up in Egypt. He had the right to the treasuries of Egypt. But he said, no way. No way. I'd rather suffer with these people that do not have any type of clout or any type of name. I'd rather go to worship and praise community church than to be part of some organization out there. I'd rather stay with God's people because I know our reward is coming. Verse 27, 28, by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for endured as seeing him <clears throat> who is invisible. Continue on. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood that the destroyer of the firstborn should not touch them. Here, by faith Moses, Moses did not fear the wrath of the king. They did not fear the wrath of the, the world out there. You know that, Danny? You go to work and you, or you go, to, go, go to Manhattan and you do not care what they tell you. They do not, you do not care if they look at you and you're a Jesus freak. You're, you're, you're stupid. You're, uh, you're, you're, you're unlearned. You're ignorant. How could you be so dumb? You're an educated person. You're a graduate. You got some degrees. How could you be so stupid and believe this fairy tale? And you say, I do not care care how come you look like this why don't you look like that why don't you go and party why don't you go and do drinking why don't you go and get drunk why don't you go and sleep around i do not care why he forsook it and he endured seeing him who is invisible 
And you can say, you know what? I see something you don't see. He kept the Passover. What is that? He kept the laws of God. He kept the things that reminded him of God. The Passover is the reminder of God passing over the children of Israel when the death angel came to kill the firstborn. And Moses said, I'm going to remember that. I'm going to cherish that. I'm going to cherish the things of God over the things of the world. Verse 29, by faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land. Let me tell you something about faith. Faith makes you pass through. <laughs> faith makes you pass through. Everybody say pass through. You know, God, if God brought you to it, he'll bring you what? Through it. Let's say that. If God brought you to it, he'll bring you through it. People of faith know if God places me in a hard spot, God will get me out of that hard spot. Somebody say amen. amen. Right? Oh, look at this. And the Egyptians are saying to do, we're swallowed up. While everybody gets swallowed up, you will rise up. While everybody is stumbling, you will stay victorious. While the world is going to economic collapse, collapse you're going to be blessed. Why? Because your kingdom minded because God is with you verse 30 31 by faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled by seven days by faith the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had perceived received the spies with peace here by faith what well, Rahab was a harlot that means Rahab was a sinner but because of her faith she was saved your faith will bring you out even if your sins try to keep you in your faith will bring you out even if you messed up. By faith, Rahab, the harlot, perished not. Somebody say, perish not. Verse 32 to 33. And what more shall I say for the time would fail me? Like right now, the, I can't talk anymore. The time is failing me. <laughs> to tell of Gideon and Bar Barak and Samson and Jephthah, also David and Samuel, the prophets. Here it is. Who through faith, right? Subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions. By faith you can go through. By faith you can work it out. By faith you can get it. By faith you can stop stuff. Continue on, verse 34. Quench the violence. Quench the, the power of fire or the violence of fire. Escape the edge of the sword from weakness were made strong. Wax mighty in war, turn flight the armies of the aliens. And we're not talking about the aliens like the ones, the UFO. We're talking about the ancient people and nations that are not part of Israel. Right? Continue on, verse 35. <laughs> Women received their dead by a resurrection and otherwise were tortured, not accepting their deliverance. Listen, I'm about faith, I can get tortured. And I don't need to receive my deliverance. And here, why? Why is this? This is where I'm, I'm really wanting to go. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Jesus said, don't fear the, the ones that can kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But fear the one that is able to kill both soul and body and throw it into hell. By faith, people would say, you know what? You can kill my body because I have a greater resurrection. By faith, people have been martyred. And we think, if they were believers of God, shouldn't God have taken them out? No. Continue on. There's a great thing here. They were stoned. Verse 37. They were sown into two. They were tempted, were slain with a sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskin, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and dens and caves and on, of the earth. And all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. Wait a minute. You told me if I have faith, I will receive the promise. No, faith sometimes pushes you against the wall and sometimes the sword becomes more mightier. And it seems like you're pierced through and you're like, why? I believe God. But because you have faith, the Bible says God having provided something better for us that they should not be made perfect apart from us. There are some things that we as faithful people understand. People of faith understand. This is it. That there are some things that you have to do so that others can learn. The Bible says they went through that because they could not receive their promise apart from us. 
There had to be an example so that Romans 15, 4 says the things that are written aforetime were written for our learning so that we through patience and comfort of scriptures might have hope. They had to go through it because why? We have to know the story. Without them going through, we wouldn't have picked up on the things that they've gone through. Does that make sense? And sometimes you're going to have to go through and you're going to have to stand there and believe God. You know, there's a pastor, there's a preacher that is locked up in Iran. You know that story? He's locked up in Iran and they're torturing him. And you're saying, if he's a man of God, why don't God open up the doors and let him escape? No. You know what? Let me tell you something. The gospel was spread by the, mar the blood of the martyrs. Every drop of blood of the martyrs was a seed for the revival of the church. Sometimes you die so that others can live. And people of faith understand that. People of faith are not afraid of death. They're afraid of dying without purpose. That's what people of faith. I'd rather die with purpose than to live without one. You understand me? I'd rather die with purpose than to live without one. I'd rather die standing up for God than to live denying Him. Here's the crux of the matter. Number one, faith is real when there is doubt. Faith, there's no faith. We're, we're done. Thank you. Thank you, Taylor. Faith is real when there is doubt. There's no real faith. You can't say you have real faith unless you have doubt. Number two, faith is real when there's reasons to be skeptical. There's no real faith if you can't be skeptic. If somebody can't be a skeptic, if you can't be spoken to by a skeptic, you don't have real faith. There's reason to be skeptical. But I've chosen to believe. Number three, faith is real when there is fear. When you're looking at your mortgage and it's about to close out, when you're looking at a firing and you're about to get fired, and you lose sight of the finances that's going to come through you. When there's fear, that's when you step out in faith. There's no real faith without present fear. Because courage is not courage. Unless you're overcoming something that is greater than you. I like, there's a movie coming out and I like their slogan. Danger is real. Fear is optional. You like that one? After Earth. <laughs> Last one. Faith is real when there is nothing but you believe in something. There's nothing, Danny. There's, there's nothing. What, what, what do you got to show for? There's nothing happening, Mike. There's, there's no opportunities presenting. Oh, I'm believing that God has great things for me. Are you nuts? Well, no. I have faith. Huh? A little of both. <laughs> right? Because faith is about possibilities. Let's all stand. Faith is about possibilities. Is it possible? With him, all things are possible. So this is what I tell you. I'm closing out this whole series. And, and I could speak on it forever and ever and ever. But this is, this is how I want to close it out. Live for God because your faith is needing to be expressed. Shun away worldliness. Get away from that. Not because you're trying to achieve heaven. God has done that for you. The blood of Jesus has made that for you. But you want to be pleasing to God to what? To exercise faith. Today, I want to challenge everybody here to exercise their faith in God. Go ahead. You have fear? Good. Then you have the ability to exercise faith. There's nothing? Good. Because then there's a place for you to exercise faith. You're skeptic? Good. There's a place for you to exercise faith. You're doubting? Good. There's a place for you to exercise faith. Would you lift your hands to Jesus? Let me pray for you. I'm, I feel like I flew through this. But I hope you picked it up. Father, I thank you, God, for your word. I thank you 
for your amazing power. I thank you, God, for bringing us together this morning. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would stretch out our faith, that you would just extend our hearts, that you would cause us to know you, O living God, and see you for who you are. And look at our lives and say, you know what? I'm not exercising faith in this thing. I need to go and exercise faith. God is saying, this is what I need to do. He's telling me to get out of my city. He's telling me to do this stuff. I'm going to do it. Not because I, I want to make it to heaven, but because I know there's a greater thing God has in store for me. And I'm going to believe God. If God said it, I will follow it. I will obey it because I'm on my way to where God has called me. And I'm going to bless you, God. Woo. Jesus. We honor and worship you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're going to receive our tithes and offering. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you have your envelopes with you, praise God. Go ahead. Danny will pray for us and lead us into a song and dismiss us also. Lord, we give you thanks, Father, for the word, Father, that was just given to us, Lord, that, that we would keep it, Father, and that we would have faith, Lord, in you, God, that we will overlook, Lord, what, what the world is presenting us, Lord, the, the walls and the barriers, Lord, and the difficulties, Father, that we would just hold on to faith, God, and hold on to your name, God. Lord, I, I bless the, the, the money coming in, Father, the tithing, Lord, and the offering, Father. Lord, that, that we bring it to you, Lord, and enjoy, Lord, and, and worship, God. And we present it to you, Lord, as, a, as a, a, a love, Father. We give you thanks, Lord, and we give you honor, Lord, in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. I have the...